If you're a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you're interested in getting more funding for your deals, regardless of what your banker would say, regardless of what your hard money lender would say, regardless of your credit, your experience, your verification of income, none of that matters in this world. Don't go anywhere because I'm getting ready to plug you into the funding for your deals. Well, welcome to the show. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. Welcome to Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. And this is your first time on the show or joining us here. I want to give you a very, very special welcome. Here on the show, we talk about all things real estate. Primarily, we talk about single family houses, but we also talk about commercial deals. And of course, even a bigger umbrella than that, we talk a lot about mindset because as you've heard me say in the past, until you own the real estate in between your ears, it's going to be very, very difficult to control the real estate that's out here. Well, we're celebrating this month our one-year anniversary of launching the podcast, Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor, and we're on iTunes and Google Play and a couple of different YouTube channels. And regardless of where you're tuning in from, we would love for you to be a subscriber so you don't miss out on any content. Be sure to uh, subscribe, and if you're on iTunes, rate and review. We love to get your feedback. If you're watching one of our YouTube channels, just comment below in the uh, comment section any questions that you have, and we'll make sure that we get all of your questions answered. And we'd love to see who's tuning in as well from where. So, you know, type in your first name and your city and state right below if you're watching YouTube. We'd love to hear from you as well. Now, over the past year, I've had some very, very amazing guests and experts here on the show today. And today, of course, is no exception to that. I'm going to introduce him in just a second, but just a quick teaser. He's going to be talking with us about this uh, concept called the infinite banking concept, which he's going to show you how you can, what we call double dip on getting simultaneous income automatically. So that sounds pretty interesting. Before we do, I just made you a promise when we kicked off the show a moment ago. And that is how in the world am I going to plug you into the funding for your real estate deals, regardless of all that stuff I just talked about? Well, I've got a free on-demand class on the internet waiting for you to attend. You can go check it out when we finish the show. I'm going, if you're watching on one of the video versions, I'm going to post it right here on the video at www.jconner.com forward slash money podcast. And there you will learn the five quick and easy steps on how to never miss out on a deal because you did not have the money. Again, that's www.jconner.com forward slash money podcast. Well, with that, I want to go ahead and jump right in to introducing our special guest today. My good friend, my colleague, we're in a high-end mastermind together. I've gotten to know him for the past year or so. His name is Chris Miles, and he's known as the cash flow expert and the anti-financial advisor. <clears throat> he's a leading authority teaching entrepreneurs and professionals how to quickly free up and create cash flow today not tomorrow, by spending time doing what you'd love to do the most. Now, listen to that, folks. Chris shares and is going to share with us here on the show how to do what you love to do most by freeing up your time and creating massive cash flow. He's also an author, and he's the podcast host of his own show called The Chris Miles Money Show, which has been featured in U.S. News, CNN Money, EO Fire, and has got a proven reputation as well with his company, Money Ripples, which gets his clients fast, life-altering financial results. In fact, before I bring on Chris, I want to tell you this, and then we're going to bring Chris right here live on the show. In fact, Chris's personal clients have increased their cash flow, cash flow by over $100 million dollars since he's been coaching his clients. So with that, my good friend, Chris Miles. Welcome to the show, Chris. Hey, thanks, Jay. Glad to be on here. Glad to have you on, man. And I tell you, it's an honor to have you on, not only because you're a good friend of mine, but along with that, I know part of your story, Chris, at your ripe old age of 41 years old, you have already retired twice. 
in your career or careers. You don't have to get out of bed unless you want to. You work when you want to. You've created the lifestyle that you want. And it's for those reasons that I wanted to have you come here on the show. So Chris, before we kick off talking about those things that you are passionate about, please share with my audience your story. What's your background story and what brought you to where you are today? You bet. I mean, definitely I like to wake up at the crack of noon, but uh, I usually wake up earlier than that, you know? (laughs) You know, I kind of started out on a weird path. I mean, one, I, I was never intending to do what I'm doing today, right? I mean, I was a sociology major in college. I was planning to become a business consultant. And, uh, and I figured if I was going to be a business consultant, I should have real life business experience. And so back in the early 2000s, I actually got the opportunity to start my own business. And the one that was willing to bring me on was, was a financial firm, right? So I started out being the traditional mainstream financial advisor telling you to spend nothing, save everything, sacrifice, suffer, and just suck your entire life away, you know, just doing the same old routine, right? And you know, I did that for four years and really enjoyed teaching people about money, but it didn't take long before I started meeting friends of mine that were real estate investors and multi-millionaires even, and they completely rejected all of the advice I was given, right? I mean, they thought it was a joke. <laughs> so in 2006, you know, I kept trying to do it, but I, and, I, and I realized too, I, I, saw, I saw the evidence. People that had decades of financial advice from advisors weren't much better off than people that didn't have advice. And, and really, that advice hasn't worked today. I mean, there's baby boomers trying to retire right now that can't, or at least not retire the way they thought they would because everything's been over-promised and under-delivered. So March 2006, I remember I, I turned in my, my notice. I said, I'm done. I will never teach about money again. I will just go out and do mortgages and teach ballroom dancing. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a shift. That was a shift, yeah, for sure. I was actually one of the nation's top amateur ballroom dancers, so... I was going to go back that route again. I thought, you know, if money were no issue, what would I do? I'm like, I'd teach, I would teach ballroom dancing. So I was starting to do that. And then I, I shifted a little bit because even though I was going that path, everybody was asking me, hey, well, something's changing about you. And part of it is because I started to like really associate with these people that had made money, right? People that were self-made millionaires. And I started to adopt that philosophy more and more and the focus on cash flow versus just growing it and gambling it in mutual funds and things like that. And the next thing I know, just, you know, not even intending, I actually was able to uh, be financially independent by July of that same year, 2006, just, you know, working a couple hours a week. And I thought, well, dang, that was easy, you know? And so because of that, people started to ask me, well, how'd you do it? Right. And so uh, even though I was able to be retired, I kind of just 2007, I came back out and I said, all right, I want to teach people how to do this. Now, I went to do that, but unfortunately, the recession hit, and everybody I was talking to were real estate investors, so they couldn't pay anything. I also was dumb enough to cut off streams of income right in 2007, thinking, oh, I'm doing my passion, so forget about those other cash flow streams, right, Um, which was the death, literally almost the death of me. I ended up going from millionaire to upside down millionaire during the recession in the whole $16,000 a month. And I had to dig back out without filing for bankruptcy. I, I still focused on trying to pay people back and get things back under control. And, and I'll tell you, that's the time I got most resourceful. That's the time I realized, hey, there's, there's cash hidden because I didn't have any savings. I didn't have any credit. There's nobody that was willing to give me any money. And I didn't even trust myself with money. You know? And uh, I was just trying to dig out of that hole. And so, so over the, next, the co- course of the next few years or so, I was able to pay off over 900000 of that debt. And I start to build, build my way back. And then three years ago, December of 2016, I was actually able to be financially independent once again, this time getting my cash flow up into the five figures a month. And especially because I have more kids, I have six kids of my own. And then my wife brought two kids from her previous marriage. So my lands, we got a blended family of 10. And so uh, a little bit higher numbers required, but you know, I'll tell you, it's, it's been awesome. Wow. Now let's go back to part of your story on when you, you know, so when you start out being a financial advisor, does that mean you were the tradition, you were doing traditionally peddling stocks, peddling mutual funds, mm-hmm. giving people advantage, financial advice under that umbrella? Exactly. Yep. I was doing the same old thing you've always heard about. Yeah. So what exactly were you doing? And I, so I know you went to teaching ballroom dancing, 
And uh-huh. listen, folks, don't go anywhere because very shortly I'm going to pull the curtain back for Chris and he's going to tell us about this concept of infinite banking. But anyway, so what happened to where you got financially independent? Was that totally through teaching ballroom dancing? No, not at all. Actually, that one, that one was actually through more like affiliate type of opportunities or what people would call affiliate nowadays, right? You know, I was, it was interesting because I, I was doing mortgages at the same time. And I remember somebody asked me, he said, hey, do you like doing mortgages? And, 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 he, and then he asked me a different question. He said, if money were no issue, would you still keep doing it? What would you do with, spend your time doing? And I was like, well, that's where I'd probably do ballroom dancing. He's like, well, what about mortgages? And I said, well, I like teaching about the mortgages and helping them get the strategy and stuff that, you know, helping them kind of map it out. But I don't like to be the one doing all the paperwork and the underwriting and all that kind of stuff, right? And so he said, well, why don't you find somebody who does like doing that and partner with them? And it never occurred to me before because as a financial advisor, I was trying to be the do-it-yourself for everything, right? Anything that would make sure the revenue streams are all coming to me. I was trying to do that. And and, in an abundance mindset, you know, when you really start to think from a place of abundance versus scarcity, you start to realize, wait, there's more possible here. And so I did. I found a guy that actually wasn't great at bringing people in, but he was very good at doing his job and and doing the paperwork and make sure people got good quality. And so I asked the guy, I said, hey, if I brought you people that are ready to just do the mortgage, but you help on the back end here, would you split 50-50 with me? And he said, yes. And I thought, well, dang, that's awesome. Because I was talking to him for maybe half an hour to an hour max. And then a month, month and a half later, I'd see a check come in the mail for over a thousand bucks. And I thought, I could do that again. Well, what, where else can I do that? And so I started like referring out just to a few people, right? Just people I was always sending referrals to anyways, that I never thought I had permission to just say, hey, hey, should we partner on this deal? You know, and so I did that. And next thing I know, I was making about four to 5,000 a month just by referring a few people here and there, just very organically. It wasn't even a business. It was actually almost accidental how it happened. Because I was actually, because remember, I felt like I was out of integrity as a financial advisor, so I refused to do that again. But it's funny, people kept asking me financial questions. So I was like, okay, well, let me let me connect you with other people that can do that kind of stuff or stuff that I don't want to do, right? And and that's kind of how it developed. And the next thing I know, I'm like, wait a minute, I can actually help people out here and, and do this on a bigger scale. So... You started doing what Henry Ford did, you know, a hundred years ago. Is it Henry Ford, Chris, that said he'd rather make 1% off the efforts of whatever it was, a hundred people or a hundred percent off of his own efforts? Well, if it wasn't him, it was probably Abraham Lincoln or something like that, right? <laughs> who knows? I don't know who, who gets credit for it. It sounds like him. So you just started, what you started doing was replacing yourself. hmm with the activities that you really didn't enjoy doing and focusing on what you were really passionate about and what you really enjoyed doing and what you were really good at, right? Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Just purely that way. And then I started bringing the inc- the investments later, but I actually was able to retire completely without the other outside investments. Got you. Well, so now today you focus on uh, helping clients increase their cash flow, bring in passive income and that type of thing. So I know one topic you're very, very passionate about, we've already alluded to, and that's called the infinite banking concept. So I want us to hang out on that. First of all, how did you come across it? What in the world is it? And how can our audience take advantage of it and put it to use? You bet. I mean, this is something actually I was introduced to actually by the time I retired, right? By some of these guys that were millionaires. And they were telling me like, hey, this is a way to use it. And it's funny because they were leveraging like things like whole life insurance, which I had always taught as a financial advisor was a piece of crap, right? (laughs) That they were just low returning, you know, very unsexy type things to use. Uh, But they brought in a whole other concept of how you can essentially use this money like a savings account you know, and, and use it today versus, you know, doing stuff like I was teaching, like long-term savings for retirement, things like that. They're saying, no, you can do this, use this stuff now. Now I'll tell you this infinite banking, banking concept, I didn't create it. This has been around for years, right? And there's different people that teach it. Many will teach it as a long-term strategy. I teach as a very short-term strategy. And this is what it is. Essentially, you create a tax-free, supercharged savings account. 
tax-free supercharged savings account. All right. Exactly. I'm definitely going to put that in the show notes. All right. <laughs> yep. It's because really what we're doing is you see most people when they try to do the, the infinite banking concept from a traditional standpoint, and I'm talking about insurance agents that need the money, right? Cause that's their livelihood, right? See me, I, I, I actually started doing this, you know, like much more seriously in the last couple of years because there was investors, friend, friends of mine saying, Hey, my people, these other investors need to learn this strategy because it's awesome. It works for me, but nobody else teaches it quite like you or does it like you or designs it like you do. And so what I do is rather than people taking forever to try to build this cash, I cut down the insurance costs as low as possible. And then you're putting in all this extra cash, much like a Roth IRA. But get this, unlike a Roth IRA where you're capped at six or $7,000 a year, I've got people that put in like three, four, five thousand a year. I've got people putting in a half million or more a year into these kind of plans that allows them to have access from day one. So they have access to the cash. So no more locking the money away for years and years like you do if you try to throw them in the IRAs and you have to self-direct it and everything else and go through all the hoops the government makes you jump through. I can make this just like a savings account where there's minimal cost, but it grows tax-free just like a Roth IRA. It comes out tax-free like a Roth IRA. And you can use the money without asking for permission from Uncle Sam, <laughs> which is pretty awesome. And it's also much more protected from creditors and lawsuits than it is if you have it in almost any other account other than like a 401k. So when someone's growing this cash, is it, are these pre-tax dollars, after-tax dollars? Where's the money coming from or does that really matter? Yeah, just like a Roth, it's with after-tax dollars. Then it grows tax-free and comes out tax-free. 